Hello viewers and welcome to Spotlight here on Hope TV where you look and live and we always do our very best here on Hope TV on Spotlight to bring to you persons who are transforming our society, impacting our generation, specifically inspired uh, by the light of God. And we are very, very delighted on this uh, program to have with us one of those change agents in our society who does his work specifically through the media area. And he has done a lot of work. Uh, even today, he's, doing, he's still doing that work in that media area. And he's doing that to just change and transform our society. And it's none other than Charles Kilonzo. Charles Kilonzo. Thank you. Welcome to Spotlight <laughs> Thank you. Thank and welcome you to Hope TV. Much. Thank and you. Just it's a viewers, pleasure. Uh, just before we get into a conversation, it's good for us to just know that uh, Charles has been in the corporate area, specifically, spe specifically in the corporate affairs and doing things around marketing, around public relations and positioning such institutions as uh, uh, BTL. And he is one of the great minds behind the uh, run for the Bible. It's also uh, positioning an organization like uh, uh, St. Paul's University, transitioning from a theological institution mm. and to the full university that it is today. And also, uh, he has also served in Daystar University, again in the corporate affairs section and you know, just working uh, many Christian organizations which he actually uh, helps to <coughs> position themselves uh, in their contributions <coughs> in the society. And <coughs> we are always glad to have you as part of this conversation. So do text us on 22232. That's our text message line. Engage us on Twitter and Facebook. We'll be glad to hear uh, what you have to say about our topic today. Uh, that is media and the church. Charles. Excellent. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you I have much. longed for this interview. <laughs> you know? I have Me seen too. you interviewing others. Yes. And I always thought, <laughs> I long for the day okay. when I will have yeah. you here uh -huh. on Spotlight and uh -huh. have you on that side, uh -huh. you know, because you're usually on this side. <clears throat> so welcome That's to right. Spotlight. Thank you. Leo Manuai. Yeah. <laughs> Happy, happy As to have you. Yeah. Yeah, that's so right. just again, you know, you know, this is uh, um, the Valentine month, you know that. I hope uh, you know. Absolutely, right? of course I do. <laughs> uh, so just tell us a little bit about your family. Yes, um, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my, my name is Charles Clones, mm -hmm. as you rightly put mm -hmm. it. And uh, I'm married to Carol. And between us, we have two boys, uh, Caleb and Collins. Caleb has just joined the high school. And uh, Collins is in class five. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a great pleasure to see the support from the base, because that's really my base. Mm -hmm. uh, all the other things that people talk out here would never be without the family base. Mm -hmm. That's really my source of, you know, power mm -hmm. and, uh, you, you know, what I do. Yes. <coughs> okay. Yeah. And yeah. It's good. And, uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, many men are struggling right now to have maybe Valentine ideas. Yes. And if, uh, <laughs> if you were able to maybe you know, give a cue to, uh, you know, what, what some of the things they can do to just enliven their marriages and the young men and yeah, enliven yeah. their relationships, Absolutely, you know? absolutely. Uh, yes. I, I mean, I mean, it's a uh, first and foremost is just to acknowledge that uh, you, you marry your friend. Mm -hmm. Of course, just in case per adventure your wife or your husband is not a friend, that would really not be what would be envisaged. Mm -hmm. But I want to imagine you marry your friend. And therefore, when you marry a friend, whether it's Valentine or not, mm -hmm. you'll find time to treat them for coffee. And mm -hmm. this treat can be both ways. Yeah. There are times my wife will ask, hey, can we go for coffee? Mm -hmm. And uh, even when she proposes, sometimes I'll come along and still pay for it mm -hmm. uh, b because that's the that's way we want it uh, done as men. Uh, therefore, I, I would want to just observe that with or without Valentine's month or date, mm -hmm. uh, the friendship must continue to grow. But of course, Valentine, of course, is not in the Bible. So I don't want to idolize it and, uh, yeah. and put it as if it is a command. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the thing is, it's an opportunity to demonstrate that love. Mm -hmm. And I'll be very happy to take Carol out and mm -hmm. to treat her 
uh, to what she loves eating or what she loves dressing in, yeah. probably a surprise. Yeah, we, uh, uh, I we hope know. you edit out this part so that you know, she for, doesn't for those, know. <laughs> uh, for those of us who uh -huh. engage you on social media especially, we can just see how oh. <clears throat> you uh, have a key place for okay. your family, your okay. wife. And, and <clears throat> it's one of these days we'll, I, I think, ask you to come and oh. uh, give us you know, just a whole relationship, marriage, absolutely, uh, absolutely, conversation. Absolutely, we'll be absolutely. happy to have that. You know? By the grace mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. By the grace of God because uh, honestly speaking is not easy and, mm -hmm. and sometimes of course what we put on social media is not necessarily like the young men will tell you <laughs> V to <a> ground in <laughs> it <of out. laughs> but, 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 but I can tell you without any fear of contradiction yeah. even now Caro is aware of me for oh, this good, interview good, and good, when yeah. you called I was with her uh -huh. and uh, last evening I took a walk with her uh -huh. you know we good. walked for, for several kilometers and came back home and during that time we are talking uh -huh. So, of course, that doesn't mean there are no hard times. Mm -hmm. There are no times when we have our own conflicts mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, misunderstandings. But I do my best because mm -hmm. really, do I have a choice? The answer is no. I, I'm here to stay. I'm yeah. here to stay. She's here to stay. And you must do your best. And I must do my know. best as, as the Lord has asked us to do. And, uh, uh, you know, and about, city. as you talk about <clears throat> things qua ground, yeah. uh, at least what we see, things above the ground, above they're the good. Ground. <laughs> they're good, they're good. You know? And it's For very you, interesting yeah, yeah. when I, you know, when we yeah. follow you yes. uh, and the places you work in the corporate life. Oh. We've seen you yeah. uh, very consistently on yeah. what we can call like faith-based organizations. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and just before we talk about live studios, yeah. which is where you're working right now as yeah. a founder. Yeah. I mean, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your faith, you yes. know, uh, because it's quite clear that yeah. there seems to be a line of, yeah. of faith that inspires yeah. you. Yeah, mm -hmm. mm. absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm a born again Christian and I'm not ashamed to, to say that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's public. If you go to my Facebook page, you'll find that the first opening phrase is that I'm a born again Christian. I do not say that to please people or as a, as a PR, you know, phrase. Mm -hmm. No, it is a condition of my heart that I came to the knowledge of the fact that I'm a sinner. And if I do not turn around, then I would be added to hell and eternal, you know, loss of my own life. Allow me to ask you just yes. before you, okay, they, they, it's very clear that you were born again and sure. heavenward, you know? Sure. At, at what time did you meet the Lord? Great, yes. great. Uh, my mom is very significant in answering that question mm -hmm. because while I was in a lower primary, my mom, who was the first person to give her life to the Lord those days, I come from where? In those days, they used to call it Kavonokia. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the people who claim they are more saved than all of us. And, and people used to look at them as, uh, you know, the earlier than the rest and, and, and the, the, that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. and, and my mom one time took me to the fellowship. And I'll never forget the words she used to the brethren who are in that fellowship. I've come with my small, you know, young son mm -hmm. and I brought him so that you people can pray for him to get saved. So uh, by default, so to say, at that particular point in time, I was uh, given over to brethren to be prayed for and to give my life to the Lord. But of course, as you grow up, I, I, I would imagine along the way I kept uh, getting, and so that was like lower primary class four or five or thereabout. And by the time I was getting to class five, I think I had understood the decision I had made mm -hmm. and recommitted myself to the Lord back with more understanding, with the clearer, you know, perspective of what this means and all that. But yes, as you rightly asked, my mom is very significant in that decision, both by being an example of what it meant, but also taking me mm -hmm. on the very first day to be prayed and to, to begin to realize, oh, when you get born again now, you'll be talking to people kindly, you mm. not lie, you not eat sugar, and then not, uh, you know, as a young man, all those things that catch up with us as teenagers and all that. Uh, and therefore, I have a personal relationship and commitment mm -hmm. to the Lord. And that's, that's for a fact, and I know it. Mm -hmm. And I have told myself, should I ever one day wake up and, uh, you know, deny the Lord, I'll be the worst of fools, because for me, the Lord means everything. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord means everything to me, you know, both in terms of life and family and work. Mm -hmm. Everything, you know, finds his, uh, 
a center in the Lord. And, and it's, 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 it's uh, you know, Charles, it's, it's beautiful just to realize that you came to the faith when you were quite little, you know, mm. a young man. Mm. And uh, because most of the people uh, would feel that maybe when you come to the faith when you're a little young, mm. it's as if it's, you know, it's a kiddie faith. Yeah. And yeah, therefore, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, wait until you can make a mature decision. Absolutely. Maybe it can count, but just Absolutely. to know that yeah. from the very base mm. when you were a young man mm. uh, and many years later, mm. you still fall back on that mm. moment and remember mm. it. Uh, mm. When you, your mom took you to this fellowship mm. and just showing that faith, you know, has, mm. uh, whether it's for a baby or mm. it's for an adult or mm. it's for a young person, mm. as long as you come to the faith mm. with a sincere spirit, mm. you know, Jesus actually does Absolutely. You know, take up your life. Absolutely. And it's, that's very encouraging, Absolutely. you know. And, uh, you know, you, you have a very interesting background because okay. uh, you have a horticulture background oh, that, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. agriculture right <laughs> and then uh, first degree, yes. your 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 life mm -hmm. is around media yeah, right yeah. seems to be like you know what you can call a mismatch a mismatch uh, yeah well. <laughs> i mean a career mismatch you know Absolutely. agriculture media, uh, media uh, can you just yeah. tell us about you know, that passion uh, a mm -hmm. lot of people that have uh, engaged me whether on media or outside i've asked that question mm -hmm. but but you see it's all about passion it's all mm -hmm. about what you want to make a career of what you want to be remembered for when you leave this life and 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 of course you know for those of us who went to school a little bit uh, earlier you know those those days you didn't have a my, my mom and my dad were not career experts you know they were peasant farmers they didn't engage me before joining university mm -hmm. to say oh when you go what do you love to do and of course once you pass a uh, jump by those days joint admissions board mm -hmm. would give you any course that uh, fits your cluster mm -hmm. and whether you like it or not that is a course and you have to take it and i found myself in jquad and mm -hmm. of course i'm forever grateful because first degrees are really meant to grow you and expose you those you know in the academia world will tell you it's never a mistake to do whatever kind of course it is but of course if you can do the right one then the better but i got to grow but of course went into a degree that uh, honestly speaking i didn't think that is what I was wired for. Mm -hmm. And so I leave J Quat after several years with a second class honors, uh, upper division in horticulture. Bright mind. So, well, mm -hmm. thank you if you <laughs> say so. But uh, so, so that then things to do with floriculture, pomology, pomology is a study okay. of fruits, floriculture is a study of flowers, and uh, olericulture, which is a study of vegetables. I still remember those things. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but then I arrive here in the marketplace and I, I, I am every asking myself am I really wired for fruits uh, you know flowers and vegetables and I begin to realize I'm more relational I'm more creative in my mind I'm more solution based I'm more more artistic in, in my approach to things and all that and I begin to take interest in public relations in marketing in advertising in sales mm -hmm. that entire space branding you know position and brands and that's how as you rightly put it earlier right from focus kenya mm -hmm. you know picking me and coming through focus two years and seven years at btl and and thinking through btl i was their their lead person in public relations uh, what they call church relations. Mm -hmm. I have worked with all the churches in this country trying to be an advocate uh, for the Bibleless community, mm -hmm. saying that God speaks to us in all languages. And therefore, why should uh, we who are in the city have a Bible in more than three languages when somebody has never had God speak mm -hmm. to them, even in the very first language, and that kind of a thing. And so through that, I create the run for the Bible. As I'll never forget that uh, my boss thought I was really lost mm -hmm. because he asked, buying t-shirts and getting all this money, you know, spending all these things, how will you ever get a return out of mm -hmm. that? And for the first one year, he didn't take up the proposal. And after that, we finally pulled through and the run for the Bible is a big thing. And straight, as you earlier said, through uh, St. Paul's rebranding from the theological college 
is a phenomenal theological institution that we all know. Uh, and then again, through Daystar, if you remember, you know, creative adverts like uh, Stars Made for Daystar, mm -hmm. you know, Stars Made at Daystar. But, but back to the question, mm -hmm. I realize then if I have to change course, I need to also get a little learned in this mm -hmm. area. And I began to look for courses in public relations. And I did uh, one in public relations management at the Kenya Institute of Management. Mm -hmm. And uh, I completed and did a project and that gave me a very formal solid basis a postgraduate diploma in public relations management after that i took uh, a master's in strategic management mm -hmm. because then it helps you to think strategically and apply you know your efforts in the right places uh, and then of course from this i realized ooh this being a lead media you know <clears throat> you know institution i i sharpened my skills quite a bit in uh, creating concepts for ads we did major adverts, you know, Stars made a data featuring some of the top media personnel, Larry Mado, Lillian Mooley, you know, all these people. And then uh, after that, you know, data parents speak out the Kimemias of the world then mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. many others, the, the little Laboso and all that got one-on-one -on -one asking them, why did you choose data? And those campaigns really worked wonders. And mm -hmm. I began to realize, wow. So, so I can create such content, I can direct, I mm -hmm. can fume. And that, to be very honest, gave me a lot of confidence and basis to lounge into live studios mm -hmm. because it's from this time when I then moved to start, uh, you know, Live Studios Media Limited. And it just, <clears throat> you know, just before you tell us something about uh, yeah. what you're doing at Live Studios, yeah. you know, it's very insightful, you yeah. know, the, the, the fact that you can have what you can call like a basic... A basic, uh, yeah. chosen for you program yeah, yeah. but then your passion mm. rises above that yeah uh, because many people are stuck uh, yeah. in what you can call mainstream absolutely expected mm. uh, professions or careers mm. uh, whereas they they, they, they they relegate their real passions mm. to what you can call you know extracurricular activities and mm. they they push to the end you mm. know you do them when you have time mm. really should be the reverse right? yeah, yeah, uh, yeah and that bonus <clears throat> I want you just to maybe speak to a person Person who is uh, this particular time wondering, you know, it's in that borderline place, you know, mm -hmm. one uh, and cannot get the boldness, you mm -hmm. know, to actually step out to mm -hmm. their passion. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you make the transition? I, I think, of course, is a is a scary, uh, you know, place to be in because uh, everyone always will keep asking, "Why? Well, supposing I make the wrong decision? Supposing what I'm feeling is not authentic? Supposing?" I feel that media is my space, but then I will not get opportunities. You know, there are all these fears. Mm -hmm. But I want to say without any fear of contradiction, always, as you've heard, follow your passion. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's important to understand what God has wired you for. And, and that can happen in many ways. And there are people all over the place to mentor and to advise, you know, to, to like, like now for, for the short time we have engaged, you can say, oh, you're very good in this, you're very mm -hmm. good. And mm -hmm. people will tell you that. People will say, oh, you, have you ever considered a public speaking? You're very good, you have such a good public mm -hmm. speaker. And then you realize you can be an MC. I'm just saying, <laughs> ah, you realize, hey, that drama, you know, the, the Christmas uh, carols and the drama, mm -hmm. you guys, hey, did you ever think you, are, you can act? You're such a good actor. Who created the script for that? Mm -hmm. I'm the one who wrote the script. Oh, you're very creative. And you begin to realize your strengths along the way. So once you understand those strengths, I think there should never be a place for fear because mm -hmm. a lot of people, is, you know, are, are separated from their passion and their careers by the war of fear mm. because they are they're, they're always the comfort zone mentality. You know, I, I'm okay here, I'm safer. You know, I've been at hope for the last uh, 10 years. You know, supposing I go to KTN and it doesn't, you know, and I'm not saying they should leave a church mm -hmm. media house mm -hmm. to go to, to, to the secular one. I'm simply saying, change will always uh, be scary because it's a known space. But I think it's important to follow your passion. And for me, it was very clear along the way that I was not wired to be at uh, Solmark and all these flower farms in Naivasha and other places, uh, you know, advising on what to spray and when to cut the carnations and when to send the flowers to the airport and Holland. 
it's a nice thing, but I, I, I thought I can do a bit of that in my garden. Mm -hmm. But I'm wired on Your engaging. Your heart was in a different my place. My heart was in a different yeah. place. Mm -hmm. I love creatives. You know, I love. I love. When I arrived here, the first thing I told you was, I love the green screen here mm -hmm. because you can manipulate the mm -hmm. background mm -hmm. of this. And, and immediately you're like... And even as you speak, <clears throat> Charles, it's very clear. You, your creative mind is, is really uh, alive. Absolutely. Now, um, just, just because you've done a lot of work in the corporate life and, uh, again, inspired by your passion, and now you have, you're the founder of Life Studios, yeah. right? Yeah. Again, a product of your passion. Yeah. Just tell us a little bit about yeah. uh, Life Studios. Life yeah. Studios is, a, is inspired by the desire to help brands you know, tell their story. Brands have what we call the brand promise. And that promise is what you propose to do for your subjects, for your publics, for the people that later become consumers of your service or your product, depending on which brand you're dealing with. But many brands are not able to tell their story simply because it's not in their forte, it's not in their, in their core business. And I'll give you an example of one of the greatest, you know, Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. Coca-Cola is the greatest. I mean, there's no competition, you know, especially in our region. But look at how often you see Coca-Cola messages and, and how do they do that? They do that because they have creatives behind the scene who think, where is Coca-Cola going in the next 20 years? Mm -hmm. How are various brands doing, you know? And we always have what we call a flagship brand, you know, like for Coca-Cola is a Coke. And then you have all these others, uh, you know, Sprite and Fanta and all that. So, so back to the, to the question, you know, helping brands tell their story. You know, CITAM and the value proposition for CITAM as a ministry is greater than just preaching on a Sunday. Absolutely so. And if you go to their website, you see a variety of things they want to do. But of course, the difference between the source and the recipient is a gap. And that gap needs to be filled by people who are able to tell that story in mm -hmm. such a great way that those who would be the consumers of that service or product then are aware. Because in our world, we say sometimes People don't support what they don't know. And we, we, we threw a joke, it's like winking at a beautiful girl in the dark. She will never see you. You can wink for as long as you want, but she'll never see you. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you may have the best service, you may have the best product. But if we, the creatives and those in the production world, do not come into your space, those in the public relations world do not come, in the communication sector, do not come to help you tell your story and tell it to the right people who are your who are your consumers of this you know product or service mm -hmm. and how what is the best means and platforms to communicate that story to them mm -hmm. and therefore at live studios we create content okay we create content that content can be television commercials can be documentaries, can be social media content. And we have created some for Sitam. You know, mm -hmm. when they were lounging Sitam mm -hmm. Clay City, Sitam Nyeri, Sitam Meru. I, I'll never forget, I was called. And how was I called? Because uh, Sitam, one of the key members of Sitam saw our content playing for the run for the Bible in one of the churches. And they say, oh, I this love that good. production. Yes. Who did this? And then finally they got us and we come into the space to tell that story. And you did a great work on that. Thank you. I remember those. Thank uh, you. Thank uh, you. Those, those uh, clips. You know, yeah. Those clips. I do, yeah. I do remember yeah. them. You do a yeah. great work. Thank you. You know, Thank you. Um, when you talk about um, branding, yeah. right? Mm. And uh, the church. Yes, of course. Now, oftentimes you've talked about Coke, which is... Uh, something that you sell yeah right yeah uh, and um, here is a church yeah right yeah and we're talking about branding the church yeah, yeah. now sometimes that sounds a little secular yeah. you know it sounds yeah. like something that you should do to maybe sell a product yeah but the mentality of many churches is that you know we stand for yeah. Jesus Christ and Jesus speaks for himself you know yeah so yeah. Uh, how can you just enlighten us on why it is important for a church mm -hmm. to brand itself. Yeah, itself. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Because, uh, because every brand, like I rightly observed earlier, has a promise. Mm -hmm. And that promise is what is it that 
the law, just like every minister, mm -hmm. just like every media house, you are not KTN, you are not citizen, you are not a Sayari, you are Hope uh, TV, mm -hmm. isn't it? And there must be the ethos, there must be the vision and mission that you want to, to carry out. And that is your calling into the lives of people, mm -hmm. if, if the focus is on people, so to say. And therefore, the reason why branding becomes crucial is because you have to clarify that to your would-be, you know, subjects or publics, so to say. Mm -hmm. They just need to understand because... Uh, you know, you know, just like uh, they say, and I may use this, it may be a crude mm -hmm. example. I mean, they say not every man, you know, wearing a trouser can make a husband. Mm -hmm. And therefore, even women, when they are trusting God for a husband, they will therefore pray. But while praying, they will also do their homework. Mm -hmm. They will look around, they will engage, they will sample in quotes because they'll accept your coffee date and sit with you, listen, oh, so what do you love doing? Oh, what's your vision about life? And, and you begin, you are immediately having a space to cast your vision mm -hmm. and you, that, that could be the opportunity to win that girl and that one. What, what am I saying? I'm simply saying that branding, mm -hmm. even at that level, because we also have what we call personal branding, helps to clarify how is this different from that other one mm -hmm. and how therefore should I, what, are, what is their brand proposition to me if that then is aligned to what I love doing, mm -hmm. then SITAM is my ministry. Yeah. You, you get. And, and therefore coming into that space, then you are helping a church clarify its vision and mission, and, and that sometimes happens in strategic forums, mm -hmm. you know, that strategic planning for a strategy for the next 10 years and so on. And then immediately from there, you begin then to say, how do we then communicate to our both current and prospective, you know, publics? Mm -hmm. and, and that whole process is, is a branding process. You know, when you're okay. still at that, <clears throat> mm -hmm. you know, one of the common things that we see here mm -hmm. in Kenya mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to branding yeah um, maybe we don't see it as branding but it's like a common practice yeah uh there are some organizations that will or some churches that yeah. will go or use the core the mission and all that yeah to i mean communicate to the public yeah uh, but there are others who yeah. you see banners across the road yeah and there's a husband and wife you yeah. know <laughs> yeah yeah it's yeah. very common that yeah. you know next to yeah. this you know so center yeah. or these ministries yeah. there's always husband and wife and it's very consistent or yeah. cluster of uh, yeah. uh, of churches mm. and one wonders uh, i mean why should we have you know the, these persons yeah. uh, why not the yeah. you know the ministry or the institution yeah. I, mean, I mean what kind in in, in branding terms yeah. can you explain that to absolutely. us absolutely mm. and, and and let me clarify something <laughs> branding is very different different from marketing or mere publicity. Mm -hmm. Branding is very different. And actually branding precedes a brand. Okay. Or, or the reverse, if mm -hmm. you may. Mm -hmm. In other words, what constitutes a brand can be communicated through a branding process. And Branding therefore tells you what to expect from, say, the CITAM brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah? It's not just about uh, having a banner across Valley Road and they're saying we have a Kesha tonight or, you know, breakthrough uh, hour and, and that kind of a thing or, or Bishop Oginde and others, you know, appearing on the banner. It's, it's more than that. It's more than publicizing an occasion or an event and that kind of a thing. It's, it's digging deep to say what is, what do we stand for? What is our ethos? What is our philosophy? What are we here to do? What space are we filling? Because Kenya, somebody has said that if you throw a stone, the most likely place that you fall is on a church. And therefore one would ask, do we even need all these so many churches? But the question always is like, for example, let me give you an example. The young people that are leaving university every other day in their tens of thousands, when they come into the market space, one of the questions besides what job to take is also where to go for their spiritual nourishment, which obviously means a church. And the question is, which church should I therefore join? 
And anybody advising a young man on how to choose a church, uh, how to choose a church, is therefore to say, what do you feel the Lord calling you to do? Mm -hmm. Oh, me, I feel called to Sunday school. Ah, okay. Me, I feel my space is with the young people. Oh, me, I feel I need to join a church that is focused on evangelistic missions and related. All that, I'm not saying every church may not have an aspect of mm -hmm. that, but in a sense begin then to define what, what the Lord is calling you to do. And the next question, therefore, is what ministry or church that then fits, you know, aligns or what can I align with in mm -hmm. terms of a ministry? And therefore, the space of branding comes in so that then, for example, like for SITAM, we know SITAM. I mean, we know the structure of SITAM. We know the governance of SITAM. We know that uh, SITAM is not a place you come and uh, the next day you claim the tithe has been eaten. You, you know, and I'm just saying this without flattery <laughs> simply that's, because that, you give me that's, this that's space. A, that's, that's an important Absolutely, in this day and age, when, state, when, yes. Yes, when mm -hmm. we've heard that uh, church leaders are taking advantage of the flock. And, and, and uh, we know the focus. We know, we know, we know, we know, we know what they are out to do. We know their mission's commitment within and without this country. You know, all that is important. We know the place of elders and deacons. You, you, you can see the structure and you can see the ministry. We know who can become a pastor at Sitam and who cannot. That is important and it's part of branding. If mm -hmm. you think of a church like Nairobi Chapel, as much as uh, my friend Oscar Muriu, you know, was phenomenal in the beginning, but look at Nairobi Chapel. Nairobi Chapel is a brand by itself, just mm -hmm. like Sitam Chapel. Look at my church, the Green Pastures Tabernacle, and uh, we shall be Bishop Sandley Mwaleli uh, and the branches across the board. You know, they, they will define themselves, and he's one of the most gifted people in teaching. You know, if you really want to dig deep into, into, into scripture and sit under his teaching, and, and that is what he has trained all those years, raised mm -hmm. to become church leader, and that kind of a thing. So, so every particular church, of essence, we'll have a branding angle, we'll have a branding niche, and mm -hmm. that is what defines that church. And therefore, as much as the bigger picture is to win souls for the Lord, there's a uniqueness there in There's a uniqueness you know, in everyone, the, the, yeah. and, and that becomes the aspect of branding. Okay. Now, uh, branding, right? Yeah. There are so many aspects to yeah. it, because there's, there are church leaders who are watching this uh, mm. program right now, there are Christians who are watching yeah. this program right now, and they're asking mm. themselves, oh, what's the brand of my church? Yeah. You know, mm. Or how do I brand my church? Yeah. Or how come that, I always thought the banner across yeah. with my wife and myself, I thought that's branding, <laughs> right? Uh, and when it comes to the branding concept yeah. uh, in yeah. the churches, yeah. 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 don't you think then that yeah. it introduces a sense of, competition that we are better uh, you know I, I i don't i don't think so mm -hmm. i don't think so it's a, it's a, it's a fair observation mm -hmm. but but i don't think so because look uh, the lord's vineyard is bigger than we all think and, and, and let me tell you the truth even today even if you build a, a bigger sanctuary and i bet you probably every sunday sitam will reach uh, even valley road alone maybe the most it could be 10000 you know the services are kind of a thing but but sincerely speaking look at the population of nairobi are you telling me every person is in the in the church of course the answer is no uh, and why are they not uh, th there could be many reasons if you carried out a survey they will tell you or even you uh, you went out to ask them do you know sitam some mm -hmm. will answer yes uh, sitam is it uh, is it uh, you know they will mm -hmm. give you all sorts mm -hmm. of answers and some will be very forthright. Yes, I know Sitam. Uh, what does Sitam mean? Christ is the answer ministries. You know, what do you associate with Sitam? Oh, Bishop Oginde. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe Karita Bagara and mm -hmm. so, so on. Mm -hmm. What I'm simply saying, for me, I would never constitute a branding process to one that then measures up to a competitive, uh, you know, a competition rather. O of course, it can give a competitive edge. Uh, and that is for a fact. Mm -hmm. uh, and where is the competition here? The competition is not against my peers in the ministry mm -hmm. and in church. No, 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 no. The competition is in doing and communicating so clearly to those that the Lord has called us to reach. Okay. Not to compete out with, mm -hmm. uh, with another ministry uh, and that kind of a thing. You know, Charles, that's very insightful. That the way we understand branding yeah. is not versus church versus no, the other. No, no, they should But it's never. in inviting the... Absolutely. The, 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 you know, it's in the Great Commission Absolutely. sense that we are telling Absolutely. you that come, 
you know, in the spirit of uh, Jesus Christ saying, come to me, you know, Absolutely. that's the same spirit Absolutely. which we carry out a branding process. Clarifying as a that so mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. in this day and age so that people would understand us so well. Okay. And therefore, find, you know, it, it's like, it's just like this space. If you switch off this light, we are likely not to know where the table was and mm -hmm. where the gap was. But, but why are you lighting? It doesn't mean when you light, the person next door is, has not put their lights mm -hmm. on. You are just saying should, in the space where, for example, where Sitam is located. When I do this, when I clarify, when I light up every other area, then it means those that the Lord could be calling to this ministry, mm -hmm. it becomes easier to identify with what do we stand for. Okay. Uh, what, what, what do we want to be known for? Mm -hmm. What is our strength? What is our outreach ministry like? If you are thinking of uh, frontier m missions, would this be the right church to come to or not? Is, uh, are we focused on uh, homegrown or abroad and mm -hmm. all that kind of a thing? There, there, are, there are many anchors to ministries mm -hmm. and therefore an aspect of branding would therefore mean just clarifying that so that then those that the Lord is calling to come mm -hmm. and to be part of you in fulfilling the greater commission mm -hmm. are therefore clearer right. and it becomes easier to fulfill the, the great commission. Okay. But not in any way to compete with my next door pastor okay. who is branding more, who is more online. No, very not in clear. that sense. Very, yeah. very Absolutely. clear. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, when you've mentioned branding, mm -hmm. what came to your mind were really big churches. Yeah. You know, big, big names. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, renowned pastors. Yeah. Uh, especially in the city. Yeah. But there are people watching this program, and they are in a small church. Yeah. They are in a remote area. Yeah. You know, they could be in Moya, for instance, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they are wondering, this branding process yeah. must be quite an investment, yeah. right? Yeah. It must be a heavy investment. And already yeah. they are like, whoa, that's lofty. That's for churches in the city. Yeah. That's for big ministries. Yeah. But how do you bring this branding advantage let, let me, let, to yeah, yeah. small churches Absolutely. and to Absolutely. even rural communities? Absolutely. Especially because you yeah. rightly say yeah. it is attracting people yeah. you know, to a space where they can be yeah. able to experience yeah. the grace of God. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's a fair question. And, and I agree. Somebody may be thinking, oh, that, that, that subject and that discussion is just for the big churches. Mm -hmm. but, but what is branding? Branding is what you want to be known for. And let me give you a very simple, basic aspect of just what you want to be known for, for example. And, and as you speak, yeah. please have in mind the church in Moya. Yes, right? yes, yes. And yes. I'm, coming. <laughs> yes. I'm coming there. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, okay. I took you to my hometown. Yeah. And we are going there for three days, uh, Friday to Monday. Yeah. Friday to Monday. And therefore, the fact that we are going to be there on a Sunday... Uh, means we should therefore uh, go to church of necessity, isn't it? Let me give you a very basic definition mm -hmm. of branding that would therefore help, whether people know or not. One of them would be, if you don't know the flow of the service, like when it starts and when what service is happening when, you will not know. You might, uh, you might be thinking uh, service uh, will start at 11 and that is the time they are finishing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if, for example, as an aspect of branding is just uh, programming, you know, at, uh, at 7 o'clock we have uh, an intercessory prayer meeting, it's an aspect of branding because you are telling people what to expect when they come mm -hmm. there. So if the Lord is calling you to pray for this nation and, and, and many other things, while you are in where a church that is clear on, wow, uh, very early in the morning, we, we start with prayer, then uh, we'll have Bible study at 10, and then the main service is at noon. It's an aspect of branding. Mm -hmm. It's an aspect of branding, whichever way you want to look at it. It has nothing to do with uh, typed and, uh, and, and big things. It, it, it has everything to do with uh, just uh, clarifying what, which church is this. Uh, yeah, we are a branch of the Redeemed Gospel Church. And therefore, we subscribe to this, uh, you know, uh, aspects, doctrinal issues and all that. 
It's an aspect of branding. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to arrive and for the sake of it just go into any church. We are also careful about what we, because as I say in the IT world, garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm. We are careful about what we feed our souls with. And therefore helping us to realize that, yeah, we are sub you know, a denomination, you know, a branch of a redeemed deliverance church, Sita Ministries. Mm -hmm. If I go to Malindi, for example, and, uh, you know, I go online, and nowadays Google has become very helpful. Mm -hmm. You just say churches around here. And then you realize, oh, Sitam, ah, I know immediately I subscribe to Sitam, you know, philosophy, ethos, you know, and, and uh, doctrinal uh, issues. Let's, 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 I want you to stay with the church in Moya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are very quick to jump to. Uh, like, oh, to, to. <laughs> because Google, you yes, know, Moya, was, you know. But, but by then, Google you know, can also pick even okay. the one in Moya. <laughs> no, now that's what, well, what we need yeah, is, yes, yes, just yes. to, um, just yeah. be, whether you're a big church or a small church. Yeah. And you're talking about aspects of branding. Yeah. Uh, and you've tied it to the Great Commission and the call. Jesus yeah, yeah, saying, yeah. come, yeah. you know. Uh, I just want you to maybe speak to the pastors, especially yeah. these ch the pastors yeah. who yeah. are in those you yeah. know, remote, Rural, places remote places and places, all that, yeah. and the Christians yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, that how much, you yeah. know, should branding be intentional? Intentional. Right? Not yeah. accidental, mm. you know. How mm. much should it be intentional? Mm. And what amount of investment yeah. are we talking about yeah. here in terms of branding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of course, uh, again, it depends. It mm -hmm. depends, uh, you know, in terms of uh, budgets are subjective. Mm. Uh, but 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 should I highlight the fact that for any branding, let's say for example, s steps of branding mm -hmm. would be first and foremost to clarify what is your vision and mission. Mm -hmm. What do you stand for? Yeah. What is your brand promise? What is it that you stand for? And you realize that even for every believer, just like you have had, you know, everyone has a purpose in this life. Mm -hmm. And therefore your purpose is not mine and it's not collective. Just like our faith in the Lord is personal. Every ministry, every church has a vision and mission, isn't mm -hmm. it? Starting from there. Uh, how do we intend to carry out our vision and mission? in fulfilling the Great Commission because all these efforts are geared towards making an impact in the work that the Lord has called us to do while on this side of the world, isn't it? How do we intend to go about that? Mm -hmm. some, some churches, depending on where they are, maybe you're in the slum, yeah? And therefore in the slum, your mission approach and the application and all that will be a little bit different mm -hmm. from those in the city where it's, it's you know, status quo change, so and so. Uh, in the village, again, as you are saying, after how do we intend to carry out our vision and mission, mm -hmm. it's just a very basic document to just say, how, how are you going to you fulfill know, that? And so you, would you say yeah. then that uh, brand for every church, yeah. uh, given the variety of... No, no voices available yeah. or speaking to the people. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, there are many voices that people are attracted to. Yeah. Would you say then that it is important that every church, whether it's in the city yeah. or in the country, yeah. to have an intentional making yourself known Absolutely. to the community? Absolutely, you know? mm -hmm. to the community. It's mm -hmm. important. It's important. I mean, uh, look at uh, the, the secular world. Look at the secular world and what they do. And, and like Jesus would have it, why should the sons of darkness mm -hmm. be more shrewd than the sons of light? Mm -hmm. And as I earlier said, people don't support what they don't know or people don't buy what they don't know. And branding is helping people know, hey, guys, we are here, mm -hmm. and this is what we are selling. This is the service we are giving. Uh, you know, we are, we, we are, uh, our approach is a full gospel holistic approach. So for us, we've come with a, a small subset of a medical approach into missions. So we have doctors in the church, and after service, we reach out to the community. I'm just saying, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. could be an aspect of ministry, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And you've heard that. Or oh, we've come, our full gospel approach is, uh, you know, a holistic ministry. So simply because of where we are located after church, what we do is that we go around and feed the, the neighbors around here. Mm -hmm. Because food could be the greatest needed thing. So in other words, I'm simply saying branding is just simply helping us who live around mm -hmm. you and those who may want to associate with you understand you more so that then our making of that decision okay. 
right. of where to be and who to associate with becomes a little bit easier. All right. uh, and that mm -hmm. is basic, uh, you, mm -hmm. you know, because you can you can dig deep into many other issues around branding. Okay. Yeah, and uh, every church can do it at their level. Mm -hmm. And there is no pressure uh, that um, ours are... It, Starting from the logo, mm -hmm. I mean, just just the way you yeah. find. But either way, yeah. it sh should be intentional. It should you know? be intentional. Yeah, I'm, because it mm -hmm. makes your work easier. Okay, in uh, people aligning with your ministry mm -hmm. and in your value proposition to the community that you are serving, even with the gospel. All right. Yeah. Then, uh, then comes to the channels of communication. Absolutely. Uh, we are in the era of social media. Yeah. And a lot goes on. Yeah. You know, you you have you found that. Uh, you find rather that uh, good things about churches yeah. come out on social media, yeah. right? Yeah. And also um, yeah. things that portray the church badly as well yeah. Yeah. come out through the social media as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so it looks like the social media platform mm. is cuts both ways. It's a double-edged yeah, It's sword. a double-edged place. Yeah. Mm. And, um, and yet it is a very vibrant space that mm. is accessible to mm. any church, mm. right? Mm. Now, I just want you to uh, uh, speak to the church leaders, to the Christians. Uh, the, how does, how would, should we use a space like social media yeah. in advancement you know, of the gospel? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, a great question and, and, and uh, a great observation. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at, look at how our life was actually less than 10 years ago. I mean, we didn't have uh, this space mm -hmm. and uh, we were not able to, you know, communicate what we have to people that are not seated with us unless we went to a mainstream media house mm -hmm. to, to ask them to help propagate that. But in this day and age, you can be in the last corner of this country in Lokshokyo and as long as you have some access to internet, you can help the world know what is happening in Lokshogyo within a few seconds. The world would know what is happening in mm -hmm. Now, honestly speaking, whichever way you look at it, as much as you say it's a double-edged sword, you know, it has some good sides and bad sides, I would want to look at the very positive side of social media and just the technology bit. Let me give you an example. Today, CITAM as a ministry, uh, and I'm glad we are speaking mm -hmm. through a, a channel of CITAM. Look at CITAM Online, for example, and look at the reach on CITAM Online. Great platform. I mean, mm -hmm. I, 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 I checked, uh, you know, uh, recently, and, and they have close to 49,000, you know, people there, yeah? Uh, look at if you stream live a service while it's happening in any of the congregations, Look at the people who are online at that hour watching that particular service. Sometimes they are more than the physical ones seated in the church. Of course, the naive way to say, ah, they are not serious people, because in your determination of seriousness, people must physically carry themselves into the sanctuary, mm -hmm. which is not true. Look at young people who have gone out raving the whole night and having their party and everything, and they are somewhere in a corner of this country because they went away, yeah? And uh, after the hangovers in the morning is on a Sunday and when they switch on the, the TV or their phone, what is coming through is uh, uh, Bishop Oginde speaking into the space of uh, the power of being a youth, a young man, mm -hmm. and that kind of a thing, or conquering your mountain, uh, <laughs> the series that is happening now. You know, imagine that uh, that young man taking interest he is, of course, geographically, look, you know, separated from you, from any congregation near. And the other thing is that whichever way you look at it, you would never have a chance to reach out to that young man because most likely he may never gather the courage to come to church. But haven't we not heard stories of people who give their lives to the Lord through such, you know, platforms and such opportune moments, mm -hmm. you know, because you've been able to penetrate geographical distance, locational barriers, because technology has enhanced you mm -hmm. to get to where the young man, the young lady, whoever it is, they could be, including the presidents who may never, if you ask a president Uru Kenyatta to visit every church, he may not. 
but you may have an opportunity to speak to him because he has a phone, he has a television, and he can watch what is happening because mm -hmm. social media and that space of technology has enhanced that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I'm simply saying, you are right in observing that the space of social media mm -hmm. has made it possible mm -hmm. that we can tell what we are doing. So that if, for example, physically I have 200 people, the Lord could be calling me to reach out to you know, 5,000 more people, mm -hmm. and the enhancer there is a social media platform. Yeah, and it doesn't take much. Just a Facebook account, an Instagram account, depending on who you are targeting, a Twitter account, and just saying we are online, you know, you may watch, and again, branding comes in because people would need to mm -hmm. know, ah, are you on these platforms? When are we likely to see you? Yes, our services are on there. Then we know, then we are able to wait and, and watch. Mm -hmm. And so that even if I'm away on duty and I'm in the interior of Southern Sudan or any other location, so to say, I can still connect with home. For mm -hmm. example, I'm sold out to the series that is happening mm -hmm. in my church. Blessed to Bless, that mm -hmm. is our series at Green Pastures Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and there are many other series all over the place. If, if I want, for example, to follow, and for some reason I cannot be in church for the next two, three Sundays, Look at the power of social media. Social mm -hmm. media has enhanced that particular, you know, you, you know, possibility. So that then, if my church streams live that service mm -hmm. from wherever I'm seated, I can connect and watch and watch that and be blessed mm -hmm. and make decisions, and so that I'm not disadvantaged by just being geographically separated from my main okay. church, so to say. At the aspect of let's say social media, yeah, one of the one of the critiques yeah. around social media yeah. is that we usually will send out exaggerated images. Mm -hmm. For instance, mm -hmm. promo-like mm -hmm. images. Uh, let's say it's a miracle service, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we want to promote that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, it's, we promote it in a way that it looks exaggerated. Oh. It looks as if, you know, wow, this is, yeah. you know, this is... Um, yeah. Uh, this is this must be over the top, right? Yeah, this must yeah. be almost formula-like. Yeah. Look at the faces that we put. Yeah. We put smiling oh. people. Oh, okay. We put happy people. <laughs> we put you know. So there is a okay. certain okay. aspect of social media that, okay. uh, using your word, <laughs> high cocoa ground. You know. Uh, <laughs> so how does the church, um, yeah. uh, you know, position itself mm. differently such mm. that whatever it presents mm. is more, mm. uh, you know. Mm. more represents Absolutely. the truth Absolutely. as compared to Absolutely. the temptation of exaggeration. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, uh, the, the world of advertising and, and PR has been accused of uh, telling us what is not on the ground. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's, that is something we have to battle with also. But, but, but let me come back home, you mm -hmm. know, in saying that, especially for us who are Christian, I mean, this is branding, this is publicity, this is uh, social media informed by our faith and mm -hmm. our ethos. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there cannot be a dichotomy of that. So that then if you, 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 you bring to me, you stream to me the service at Sitam Valley Road, it, it will obviously of necessity be the actual service. Mm -hmm. If you want to share a, a, a teaser of what is coming next, it will of necessity have to be what is on the ground and, and just show me, yeah, this is how the service went. Of course, the editors in their post-production cuts and all that will choose, including this interview. They, they, they will choose what to admit, what not to admit. Mm -hmm. That's a subjective. Uh, and therefore, the fact that they may ignore a certain section of the interview, that they have their own reasons and part of that in you, you know part of what informs that is a policy what we want to to be known for again back mm -hmm, to branding mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. are things you may say here uh, when it's on a live tv we have not much we can't do much and i think the wisdom of uh, you know recording is because you have an opportunity to edit and therefore i want to throw it back to the ethics and, and just the whole question again of branding, what do we want to be known mm -hmm. for? Do we want to be known for just mere hype, like what we see on all social mm -hmm. media spaces? You've, you've used the you word. Know, the yeah. word is hype. Hype. You because know, you, you have to present you, a hype image. You, 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 know. you, 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 you take a picture and uh, you, know, you keep posting it and maybe it's on a green screen, you have edited. And then you are showing us you are in Dubai and uh, it's photoshopped or even if it's real. Is it necessarily that mm -hmm. that is what must sell? There are moments people go through pain 
What about when mm -hmm. you post one when you're in hospital and saying, brethren, wherever you may be, pray with me. I'm going through a difficult time. I'm going through a depression. That's reality in life. But must we of necessity just see the good side, the good side. of, of, mm -hmm. of Reverend Vuri and, uh, and Mr. Klonzo? Uh, of course, that, that is not, the, 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 you know, the, the, the reality. You know, I, you yeah, know yeah. just <clears throat> allow me to uh, mm -hmm. just pick on mm -hmm. that and say something that you've really stated clearly, that yeah. it's important that yeah. our our communication yeah. uh, is informed yeah. by truth. By truth. Right? Uh, what you yeah. have called as you know, ethics, ethics, right? As yeah. our ethics as a church. Yeah. And not to yeah. get caught up in that. Yeah, ethics you know, and faith. Yeah, 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 yeah. teasers mm, which uh, look whatever. exaggerated. Yeah, exaggerated. And it's just amazing how quickly mm. time runs. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> and I have to ask you finally, finally, finally this mm -hmm. question. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. what runs, well, what trends really fast? Um, it's negative, uh, negative church stuff. Yeah. You know, if there is a pastor, for instance, yeah. who is doing, um, you know, kind of strange things, yeah. uh, you know, that trends very fast. Yeah. It catches on yeah. pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if there is a church yeah. that is having a scandal, yeah. right, yeah. that on, you know, Social different media, media platforms trend, runs very fast, fast, whether it is yeah. TV, whether it is, mm. that's, you know, where it's a church mm. that is fighting, you know, mm. that's the news, right? Mm. Uh, and it seems uh, to, uh, to, to, it seems to me that the church doesn't have a good way of mm. countering, oh, countering, you know, uh, negative images mm. that that are that mm. are uh, broadcast about it, mm. and so the image of the church or the yeah. brand of the church in yeah. general mm. is cast in doubt Absolutely. by these trending Absolutely. negatives, right? Absolutely. Uh, Charles, if from your experience mm. as a branding expert, mm. now wh what do you advise the church to do mm. in times when there is such a scandalous, mm. um, you know, circulation mm. of um, uh, of some information that is mm. quite sectional, mm. uh, but it it actually soils the entire church, Absolutely. not even the specific church mm. that is involved. Mm. Yo, finally, Absolutely, I mm -hmm. think it's a, it's a very fair observation mm. because uh, it happens every other day, and not just in church. It can catch up with you as an individual. Mm -hmm. It can catch up with me. It can catch up with uh, an organization. It can catch up with a church. It can catch up with a bishop can catch up with an Asha, you can catch up with anybody. Mm -hmm. The question is always, especially now that we are focusing on a brand and particular church, number one is to accept that there will be such moments. Mm -hmm. In our lives, there will be such moments. At personal level, at ministry, at church, at organization, there will be such moments because it's just the way it is. One is because we are, we are not perfect beings. We are not perfect organizations. Our pastor has taught us, if you are looking for a perfect church, then when you find it, please don't join it because you'll spoil it. Because even you yourself, you are not perfect. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what I must say is that there will be such moments because inevitably we are all fallen and those candles don't fall from heaven they, or from the clouds. They, they come through people because we are fallen. They come through pastors who get caught up in situations. They come through members who get caught up in situations. But, like you rightly put it, how do we then, mm -hmm. you know, redirect our energies and take the ship back to the cause without uh, losing the bigger picture? of our calling. How do we bear with that? Of course, the Bible is very clear on how to restore a fallen brother or a fallen sister. But sometimes, rightly as you put it, when it's an organization, we assume it. And many times I've seen that, uh, that, that tragedy in churches and organizations where they do not invest in communication experts. They do not ex uh, invest in brand experts. They do not seek counsel. They do not seek consultants who should advise. If, for example, a ministry like this has an issue or is uh, having a press brief at uh, 3 p.m. today, why would you not ask experts? If you have a communications expert, we are trained to tell you what to say on camera and what not to say. To tell you some questions do not exactly uh, mean what they are, they are asking. They, they are means to another question which is not asked and an answer. And all my life I spent you know, asking people questions, you rightly put it at the beginning, including the president. Mm -hmm. I have sat with him on one-on-one -on -one and asked him questions, and he has answered. And even him, I want to believe his people, Kansadena and the rest of the team, prepared him 
you know, because they ask you to send equations ahead of time and all that, and look at all possible angles to it. What I'm saying is, church sometimes has been branded as a, a condoning mediocrity because we do not invest in experts, in people who can help us do things in an excellent way. And part of that is just communication. And I think it's important for every ministry, every organization, every church, to have communication experts, branding experts, mm -hmm. you know, media experts. You know, if you are dealing with the media, you know, it's okay to mm -hmm. ask people to say, hey, we have a brother who is born again, who is a Christian, a member of our church. Can he be called? Can he meet with the bishop to discuss this before we go to the press conference? Mm -hmm. and, and just like lawyers, you know, you don't go to court alone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes churches trivialize some of the professions. It's important. Even a pastor needs an advisor to be alongside there to say, hey, before you answer that one, you find they're talking. The same way they talk in court. The judge has asked a question and your lawyer taps and says, no, 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 that one I'll respond and okay. this is a fact. Yeah. Well, Charles, it's been very insightful. Yeah. You know, it's just amazing how this big, yes. how big an area this is, Absolutely. especially in the contemporary church. Yeah. And thank you for sharing your yeah. wisdom. Yeah. And I'm sure the churches and the leaders and the yeah. Christians who've been listening to this program, yeah. watching this program, yeah. you know, they have really gained some insight. Absolutely. And, and I let them know that we can help them, especially in creating content. Okay. Yeah, that is our space. And we are very happy. And we have helped a lot of church and parachurch organizations to tell their story and communicate. All right. So that then it becomes easier to carry out and do ministry. Great. Yeah. It's been a privilege to yeah. interview yeah. Uh, the man who interviews president. <laughs> <laughs> Viewers, uh, we've been talking yeah, about you. media and the church, and it's very yeah. clear. Mm. You know, so many things have come out in terms of insights, but one mm. very fundamental one is that even mm. as we uh, go out to the Great Commission, mm. given the many voices that mm. are you know, reaching out for the same people that we are reaching out to, mm. it's imperative that we get onto a branding initiative. And mm. now this branding initiative is not supposed to be one that is expensive. Mm. Uh, there are many channels that make it really affordable. At the mm. same time, as we brand ourselves, it's not good that we have a competitive, you know, an internal you know, intra-church competition. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, we should mm. be able to brand ourselves for mm. the sake of reaching out to the lost mm. and reaching out to those people who we desire to come to the church. Mm. So mm. viewers, this has been Spotlight mm. and we trust that you have been enlightened mm. by this edition. Mm. Again, thank you.